Welcome to Lesson 2, Solutions and Solubility. Our lesson objectives, using Table F, determine if a substance is soluble or insoluble, meaning it forms a precipitate. When we talk about solutions, we're going to discuss what is a homogeneous mixture. If you recall, homogeneous means that they are uniformly mixed or evenly mixed. And there are two key important terms in the discussion about solutions. One is the solute, which is the dissolved substance, and the other one is the solvent, which is the substance that we're dissolving the solute in. So an example here of salt and water, we make our aqueous solution of salt water. It's a homogeneous mixture. It's going to be evenly mixed, and it is the salt, which is the solute, which we're dissolving in the water, which is the solvent. And recall that when we place ionic compounds like sodium chloride, NaCl, we put them into water, they're going to dissociate into ions, meaning they're going to break apart into ions, the positive and negative ions. So in this case, Na plus and Cl minus. And if you look here, since we have these charged particles, these positive Na pluses and these negative Cl minuses, we can then conduct electricity. So we call these ionic compounds electrolytes because they conduct electricity. So how does um, salt actually dissolve in water? Well, if you look at this solid salt crystal, we have the Na plus and the Cl minus. And so if you look at water here, recall that water is a polar compound, so it has a partially negative and a partially positive end. It's a dipole. And so what happens is essentially the water is going to pull apart the sodium chloride based upon its charges. And so the Cl is negative, and so it's going to be attracted to the positive end, the two hydrogens on the water, and then the Na plus is going to be attracted to the negative end, which is the oxygen on the water. And you can see that in the animation here, how it literally just pulls apart the solid salt crystal. In molecular solutions or covalent solutions where we're dissolving something like sugar, for example, um, these do not conduct electricity. They're not electrolytes. And that's because they don't contain these charges. When they break apart from a larger crystal into smaller crystals, there are no charges on these individual molecules and therefore we don't get conduction of electricity. So now that we understand what a solution is, let's talk about solubility. This is the ability to dissolve, and it's a physical property. So if a substance is soluble, we say that it dissolves well. If it's insoluble, not, not soluble, then we say the substance doesn't dissolve well, and it will stay as a solid. Now let's look at table F, our solubility guidelines for aqueous solutions in our reference table. And what this is going to show us is which substances are going to be soluble in water and dissolve well, and which ones are going to be insoluble, not dissolve well. And so if we're in this first column on the left-hand side of the table, these are our soluble ions, meaning that they will dissolve in water and form an aqueous solution. So they have relatively high solubility. In the first column on the right-hand side, these are our insoluble ions, meaning they don't dissolve well in water, and they're going to form a solid, or we say a precipitate in solution. It's going to precipitate out or form a solid in solution, so they don't dissolve well. So this side dissolves well in water and forms an aqueous solution. This side does not dissolve well and forms a precipitate, a solid. So now what about these exception columns? Well, for example, as we said, this left-hand side, all these ions are soluble. So if I look at the halides, for example, Br- is soluble, except if it's combined with silver, lead, or mercury. So if bromines combine with any one of those three, it is an exception, and it's no longer soluble. It would be insoluble. Same thing for this side here. All of these are insoluble um, ions in compounds except when they're combined with one of these exceptions. So for example, sulfide is not soluble except when it's combined with group one. And so an example would be lithium sulfide. Li is in group one, so therefore it's an exception and it's no longer insoluble, it would be soluble. And so the exception columns basically are just going to negate the column that it's in. So soluble exceptions are gonna be insoluble, insoluble exception is going to be soluble. 
So let's see an example. Is AgNO3 soluble or insoluble, meaning does it form a precipitate? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look up the anion, the negative ion. That's written last in our chemical formula. That's this NO3 here. I locate NO3 on table F, and I see that it's in the soluble column, meaning that it's going to dissolve. In fact, you notice there's no exception, so all nitrates, anything with NO3, is always going to be soluble, and therefore it will form an aqueous solution. Let's look at another example. Determine which product is the precipitate, meaning which product is going to form a solid, meaning which product doesn't dissolve. And so let's look up our two products. So we have silver chloride and we have lead nitrate. So we'll start with the silver chloride. I'm going to look up the anion Cl minus. I'm going to find that on table F and it's down here. It's a halide. And so it's in the soluble column. So at first glance, this ion would make it soluble. But then I look and see there's an exception. It says except when combined with Ag plus, so silver. So when it's silver and chlorine, so silver chloride, that is going to be an exception. So it's no longer soluble. It's going to be insoluble, which means when I put it into water, it's not going to dissolve. It's going to form a solid precipitate. And so I would label this with an S for solid. And then if you look up uh, PBNO3, I look up NO3. We just did nitrates. They are listed here. And there's no exceptions. Those are always soluble. So that's going to dissolve and form an aqueous solution. And so I could write AQ to indicate that it would dissolve in water. Let's look at one more example. Which product is the precipitate? Again, which product is going to form the solid and not dissolve in water? And so we look at our products here. We have PBR. I'm going to locate BR, which is right next to the one we just did. And then I see that it's soluble, but I'm going to look at the exceptions. And I see that PB is listed as an exception. So just like before, is an exception. So therefore, it's no longer soluble. It's going to be insoluble. So we put it in water, it's going to form a solid, so I'm going to indicate that by putting the S for solid. And then again, all nitrates listed here are soluble, and so that will dissolve, and that will be aqueous. So in these double replacement reactions, which we have here, um, where we have two replacements, PB went here to combine with BR, and NA went here to combine with NO3, as we see here, um, if this double replacement reaction takes place, we're always going to have a one solid precipitate and one aqueous solution. If we end up with both aqueous solutions, then we say the reaction did not take place. So let's check your understanding. Using table F, determine if a substance is soluble or insoluble, meaning does it form a precipitate. At this point, you should be able to use table F to determine if a substance is soluble or insoluble, meaning forms a precipitate.